Hello, Dr. Doyle, back. Hopefully you've watched the video where I introduced hiatographs. Today, in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to use hiatographs and how to develop what are called intensity, duration, frequency curves, which look like this. So, we wanna be able to use our precipitation data, uh, observed data, to des predict design storms. And then as water resource engineers, we use these design storms to help guide our design. Um, so certain designs require you to use a two year, 24 hour storm. So we're gonna kind of break down what that means and what, how to derive where that came from. Okay, so when you are designing water resource projects, And again, when you think about these water resource projects, think back to those four questions that I introduced at the beginning of the quarter. So we're talking about how much water, where the water is gonna come from that we need, where the excess water is gonna go. So when we're designing uh, water resource projects, the only way that we can do this design is to have some estimate for how much uh, precipitation to expect. So in order to do that, we use historic data. To estimate or predict what's going to happen in the future. So again, when I say this, as an example, I might be designing for a 100 year, 24 hour storm. Or quite often in stormwater design, you're doing a two year storm um, in, a, in a five hour duration or a one hour duration. And what does this mean? What does the 100 year, 24 hour storm mean? I'll start with this little bit easier one. This 24 hour storm, this is the duration. Okay, so this is the amount of time from that first raindrop hitting the ground as the storm passes to the last raindrop. So it just tells us the total amount. These values that we're gonna get are just gonna total, tell us the total amount that fall in the 24 hours. If we want to go back and look at how that distribution varies over this storm, over those 24 hours, we're gonna talk about that when we meet next time. Okay, so that's the duration, 24 hours, first raindrop to last. This 100 year, this is my frequency. Or probability of that this is gonna occur, some probability. And what this 100 year storm mean, means a 100 year storm has a 1% probability of occurring. Depending on how these are derived, but usually for us, that's gonna be each year. So each year you have a 1% chance or one over 100. That's where that 100 year storm, 100 year value comes in um, of occurring. So our frequency, when we talk about frequencies, is equal to one over the return period where our return period is this 100 year, could be 20 year, okay? So in frequency is like a probability. Okay, so we do this, we get these values. How do we get this value? So I know that for some particular design, I need to use the 100 year, 24 hour storm. That's gonna give us some number, some value, and that value is gonna be some intensity. 
So I need some way to find the intensity given that I need to design for a 100 year, 24 hour storm. How we're gonna do that is by using these IDF curves. So this is an IDF curve. which stands for intensity, duration, and frequency. So it has all three of those represented in this figure. In this particular case, and you'll see them different ways, we'll talk about this when we meet, the duration is shown on the x-axis, the intensity on the y-axis, and each of these lines is for a different frequency. So, um, this one, this particular example that I've drawn gives the um, intensity and duration for three different return periods or frequencies. A five-year storm, which is gonna be the probability of recurrence in, in a particular, particular year of one over five, or 20%. A 50-year, which has um, a, sorry, that one is, a 100 year storm is a 1%, 50 year is 1 over 50, which is 0.2. I would calculate it, but my calculator is filling me right now. So 50, a five year storm is 1 over 5. That is about a 20% chance of occurring every year. Pretty sure about that one. The 50 year is 2% chance. The 100 year is a 1% chance of occurring any particular year. Um, yeah, any particular year, but then we have different durations. So um, as you increase in duration, your intensity, which we always count in inches per hour, is going to decrease. Okay, so if you have a 24-hour storm, usually that means that it's, it's not very intense for that entire time, right? Um, which is different than if you have a five-minute storm, it's pretty intense, meaning a lot of rainfall in a shorter period of time. But as you um, decrease your frequency or increase your return period, you're going to increase that intensity. So I would expect that a 100 year storm of duration 24 hours is going to give you a greater value than a 50 year storm. And for small areas, approximately 10 square miles, we can, with one gauge, with one rain gauge, we can generate these. IDF curves, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, let's talk about generating IDF curves really quick. So I'm gonna just take you through some steps that we can do to generate IDF curves. You will get the opportunity to practice this in an upcoming lab. So I've drawn down here just some example data. So let's say that you are able to get these hyatographs for different duration of storms. So here's five minute, a 10 minute, a 30 minute, and a 24 hour for different years. Now you wouldn't, you would need way more than two years of data. Let's say you had all of the days, all of the years between 97 and 2021. You could display the hyatographs, which again is the intensity of rain um, over time for each of these durations. So five minute in 1997 and a five minute storm in 2021 looked very different and had a def different total rainfall. So you would also look at the total amount of rainfall that fell in those different durations. Okay, so we have the ability to get out this data and we're gonna use it to generate, again, those IDF curves that I previously had showing right here. What are the steps we're gonna take? Step number one, get the annual precipitation data. Okay. So we're going to look up some gauge sites and we'll talk all about gauge sites coming up here. And you're gonna basically generate um, time and precipitation and it's going to look something like this. We have some dry months, then some more rain and so on. You're just gonna get the data, that's the first step. 
Second step is going to be to pick the duration or durations, usually do this for multiple duration. Z. We want delta T, we'll call this delta T. And find the max I for each year for that duration. So in my example below, I'm going to look at every five minute increment where it rained, and I'm going to find the maximum in 1997 of five minutes. I'm going to record that value. Okay. I'm going to do the same in 1998, 1999, all the years until 2021, finding the maximum total precipitation that fell in the five minutes. Okay. There we go. Then I repeat for 10 minutes, repeat for 30 minutes, 24 hours, all the durations I'm interested in. Step three is going to be to set up a table ranking these I maxes. Okay, what do I mean by that? This is shown in your handout, but I can make a table that has rank, I'm going to call this M. I max, I'm going to convert all of the intensities, no matter what duration I'm looking at, into inches per hour. And then I'm going to calculate my return period. I'm going to call that T. And then from there, I'll also just show the probability. These are directly related. Okay, so my rank, I'm going to rank them from highest to lowest, highest, lowest, okay. So let's say that in year one, um, let's say I'm looking at a duration here of um, 24 hours, okay. So let's just say I'm looking at my 24 hour data. So I search through and I find that in the year 97, but the year doesn't matter. I'm just writing this year to kind of go through it. The maximum was eight inches per hour. Um, and then in the 19, let's just call this 99, I had 7.6 inches per hour as the maximum for a 24 hour duration. This means that it actually, the total rainfall was eight inches per hour times 24 hours, right? Not just eight total inches, okay? And you, you keep doing this, this goes up to 99. And let's say the third year you had 7.0 inches per hour, and then the lowest was 4.0. So I've ranked these from highest, number one, most amount of rainfall, highest intensity, to number 99. Now, in the example I gave here, I didn't quite have 100 years. Let's say we did. My return periods I'm going to calculate as M plus 1 over N, where N is the total Sorry, 99 plus 1, the total, divided by the rank. This is 100. This is my 100-year storm. This has a probability of 1 over 100, 0.01. This one is 99 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 50, or a probability of 2%. And then this one over here, this very last one, is 99 plus 1 over 99, which is approximately one, essentially meaning that you would expect in any given year to get a value of four inches per hour, okay? Step number three, that was number three. Step number four is to interpolate from this table, 
to get the return periods which is again another word for frequency not another word another way to describe So for example, you might want a 20 year storm, but it may not show up in here. So you might have to interpolate. Step five is to repeat one through four for additional delta T's, for additional durations. So this was my 24 hour storm. I might need to do it again for a 30 minute storm, a 10 minute or five minute. The last step is to generate my IDF curves. I am going to do this by making another table here. On this table, I am going to put my return period And I'm going to put my different durations, so five minutes, 10 minutes, all the way up to 24 hour. And then I'll just put on here my 50 year, and my 100 year, and I might see, okay, for the 24 hour, my 100 year um, was, let's do it five minutes, that was eight, 20, and up to 115, and then this was 110, this might be 16 and 7.6. From that, you can create your IDF curves, just like we showed in the previous slide, image, window, whatever you want to call this. Okay, that's how you generate IDF curves. We will practice this, um, generating these in a lab, and we'll do some examples of using IDF curves next time we see each other. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you soon.